So when I started working with fire, I knew that this was the real test of the game. And why? In a word, performance. And if you watch my FPS in the top right, so right now it's a stable 40 to 45 FPS. And for about 10 seconds as fire was spreading, FPS was totally fine. And then about 10, 20 seconds into it, and boom, suddenly we got a 15 FPS drop all of a sudden for no reason what's going on. And every time an FPS drop like that happens, my heart sinks because quite frankly, I don't know the best ways to often troubleshoot certain things, but I'm gonna show you what I do know. So with any FPS drop, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna turn on detailed stats. So you can find that in the top left corner and then under engine, select detailed. And what this is going to allow us to see is everything from frame down to GPU and even memory. It's going to show us, okay, what's the bottleneck that's really holding up performance? All right, so here we are again, and we see the spike in performance down there in the bottom left corner. And in the top right, we can see that red, that's our game thread. So in my mind, that's actually good news because I was worried it's all GPU, that the fire something our GPU is not gonna be able to handle. But the game thread, that really means blueprints, or it means something that's running on the CPU. Not necessarily blueprints, but because everything I'm doing is blueprints, it's probably blueprints. So now that we know it's the game thread, what I'm gonna do is under stat advanced, I can enable, if we scroll down, there's a lot of stats here, game. And what this is going to allow us to see is one level deeper, like what within that game thread is actually taking up the most time. Right now, those bars are very small because nothing's going on, but let's start things up again. So within my level loading, there's always this initial spike and it's gonna settle down because yeah, it's basically physics, the rocks getting settled, foliage spawning, all that fun stuff. Everything's normalizing, and then we can see what's up. And there's that giant spike again. So it's all in the blueprint time you see there. So something in blueprints is causing a serious problem. So what's our next step? Doing some searches, I stumbled upon this really useful blog post by Unreal Engine, and I know it was written all the way back in 2014, but it holds up really well. So I'll post a link to it in the description below and you can check out the entire article. But what it recommends that we do next is use the tilde key to open up the command console and entering stat start file. And that's what actually starts recording data for the profile. And it says, let it run for at least 10 seconds or so to get a nice average over many frames. And then we can stat stop file to actually end it. All right, so we wait for the giant spike again. And here we go. So tilde, and we're gonna do stat start file. One word, if I could spell, there we go. And in the top left corner, now we've got our uh, stats file. And it says duration six seconds, seven seconds, eight seconds. You only need a few seconds of this, and then you should be good, especially if you've got a stable issue. Now, if you have periodic spikes in your frame rate, you probably wanna record for a longer period of time so you could see what's going on with those spikes. I have some little spikes, uh, but predominantly it's just overall frame rate spikes through the roof. And then stat stop file. All right, we can exit out. So we got our profile snapshot, but how do we look at that? So for that, we gotta go to tools and then we can go to session front end here. And then we need to navigate over to the profiler tab and we need to load in the last file that we just recorded. So we go to load and you're probably gonna have to navigate to this folder, but it's under your Unreal projects. You go into your main folder saved and then into this folder called profiling. Under Unreal stats, there you'll find the file. So it's in here. And it'll probably just take a few seconds to load depending on how long the recording was. So now we get into the more interesting stuff. So you can either here select a single frame or you can click and drag and select multiple frames. Then you could look at an average over that period of time. If you select just a single frame, then it'll be just one frame. If you select an overall period of time, you could actually look at the maximum, which is helpful to look at those spikes. But in our case, I just wanna look at the average because I wanna see what's going on, generally speaking. And then we start coming down here to the events. And the first thing I'm looking at is the background thread pool. So that's not gonna tell us anything because it's just waiting for something else to happen. So what we really wanna do is we wanna take what we identified in the first couple of steps, which is that it's the game thread, and we wanna expand that part of the profile. So game thread, and I know my head is blocking here, so let me just readjust this slightly. So now with the game thread, we can see that that's taking up 35 milliseconds per tick, which is quite a lot. And most of that is frame time. So we're gonna expand frame time, and then we can expand here frame time. In the world tick time, that's what's taking the most, so we'll expand that one. Tick time, pre-physics here, expand that release tick group. So basically you keep digging deeper here and looking at the most expensive, basically the highest millisecond tasks. And then finally we get to tick function tasks. 
and wow so ground foliage hierarchical instant static mesh that i've set up that's taking 18 milliseconds and under blueprints it's actually a function within the blueprints and not only that i can see the specific function on the blueprint it's this on fire check function that's killing me and so at this point you would go into that blueprint and start troubleshooting and it took me a little while to figure it out but it really was pretty obvious in retrospect so if i go into my foliage hism here so this on fire check function that i created basically it's taking every single instance of the static meshes and it's checking every single instance every single tick whether or not it's on fire obviously that's not a good way to handle it because there could be thousands of those instances and really we only care about those that are on fire so what i ended up doing is I ended up creating a brand new array where I store the ones that are on fire. It's a much smaller number. So the end result is perfectly fine performance, even with a ton of foliage on fire. So I hope this was helpful, and uh, hope to see you guys in the next episode.